Thankfully, we don't have any snow in our forecast, but that doesn't mean that your back can't get thrown out throughout the day. Uh, we, for the past few days, have had slippery conditions on uh, driveways, on parking lots, even on sidewalks. So if your back has been thrown out because of that, you don't want to go anywhere. She is going to help us out. She's at the chiropractic office, and if you do have some issues on the ice and the cold, trying to slip, or if you're shoveling snow, she's got all the details for you. Good morning, Lindsay. Hey, good morning, Hannah. Good morning to all of you out there, too. Um, even I slipped this weekend. I went to High V, and the parking lot was very slippery. Uh, my foot kind of came out from under me. Luckily, I caught myself and didn't cause too big of a ruckus. But, you know, it's very slippery out there sometimes in the winter. Um, and throwing your back out can cause all types of issues all throughout your body. Um, right now, I'm joined by Dr. Justin Felsman, and um, you have a spine in your hand. Explain a little bit about the different parts of the spine, first of all. Okay, well, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's different parts of the, the vertebrae. There's the upper part, which is the uh, cervical vertebrae, middle part, which is the thoracic, and lower part is the lumbar vertebrae. Um, exiting outside is all your spinal nerves. So if you do slip and fall, um, you could torque your spinal vertebrae in one direction and end up causing compression and hurting those nerves. Nerves tell your brain, hey, there's pain somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it can, you can hurt all over the place too from that. Absolutely, yep. Um, I mean, your spinal nerves control everything, so you can have radiating symptoms that go down your legs, into your arms, um, that are pinpoint to your neck. Um, so yeah, anytime that there is a slip or fall, you got to be very careful and, and get it checked out to make sure that it's not, nothing more serious than what it could potentially be. Now, how soon should you get it checked out? I mean, maybe put some ice on it, rotate that with heat. How soon should you actually go to the doctor? There's, there's always the debate, the ice versus heat. You kind of brought that up. Um, usually if you have an initial injury, it's usually 24 to 48 hours you want to ice it. Mm -hmm. So if you do, um, you are out there and you do slip or you fall or you kind of catch yourself and choose the ice for the first 48 hours because mm -hmm. it, it takes down inflammation and it takes away some of the pain. And um, we were talking a little bit earlier, not on camera, but about shoes and the proper types of shoes. Uh, explain a little bit about that. And that's, that's key. A lot of times we'll go out and we'll be wearing dress shoes or we won't have the, the proper fitting shoes. Mm -hmm. So you want something that has a good grip, um, something that's going to, you know, firm to the, to the ground so that way you're not slipping and falling and, and, you know, good tread to it. And now that can affect your back as well, correct? Oh yeah, the way that your foot hits the ground um, absolutely can definitely affect everything up, up your spine. And now the different parts of the spine mm -hmm. correlate to different parts of your body. So if you injure, um, say, your lower back, you could feel it in your legs. Um, what about the middle and the upper parts of your back? Uh, well, the same thing applies. Um, the spine has a perfect diagram here of what, what would happen if a disc um, were to get involved. So as you can see here, the spinal nerve roots exit. If you were to blow a disc, so to speak, uh, the spinal nerve roots would get irritated and you'd usually get symptoms that run down your legs and that's usually if you do slip and fall you do have those shooting pains down your leg it could be either a disc or it could be sciatic nerve could be inflamed um, could be several different things and thankfully we haven't had too much snow uh, this winter yet but shoveling is a big issue and we're going to talk about that here a little bit later also sleeping if you sleep incorrectly you could also hurt your back um, all that and much more coming up a little bit later on in the show Hannah I think that I'm finding out that I'm probably going to be doing all of this wrong. It seems like even the <laughs> smallest little slips can actually do something mm -hmm. to permanently hurt you. So great, great advice. Thank you, great. Lindsay. We'll be back with her. Mm -hmm. Good Thank morning. You. And if you're waking up and uh, you have a little back pain, the way that you're sleeping might be to blame. We're going to talk about that coming up next. But first, do you sleep on your back, your side, or your stomach? Well, believe it or not, the way that you sleep could have a serious impact on your back. Now, Lindsay Boach joins us live this morning. Good morning, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Hannah. And yes, when I was um, a baby, uh, my mom was always told to put me face down. Um, and I know that's not the case for Olivia, who is quite a bit younger than I am. She's always told me to lay right. her on her back. Yes, um, that actually is a good idea um, because now I sleep totally crooked. <laughs> I actually sleep with my bottom half um, face down and my front half kind of like this. Totally twisted, but that can really injure your back. Um, Dr. Justin Felsman joins me now. Um, how bad is that? It's, uh, it's not good. The, the, <laughs> best, the best way to sleep would be on your side. Okay. Um, so three pillows usually is what's, what's best. Um, have a pillow to support your neck on the side, have a pillow in between your arms, and then a pillow in between your legs is usually the best way to sleep. And now the front or the top half of me sleeps on the side, which yeah, that's totally different. But um, I almost feel like my neck is pushed up like this. Would that pillow help support that? It should, yes, definitely, absolutely. You should have it underneath the side, so that way you're not on completely on the side, straining those muscles in the neck. 
uh, pillow types, does that have any impact on how you sleep? Absolutely, there are some really good pillow types, um, especially if you do end up sleeping. If you, if you can't sleep on your side and you sleep face up, there's some pillows that will help support the neck muscles as well. And then usually you want to, uh, again, a support underneath your knees as well. And we have um, a little spine here. Uh, can you kind of demonstrate a little bit about what, what can happen if you're sleeping the wrong way, what different parts of the body are affected? Yes, absolutely. The, the, the most common or one of the worst ways to sleep, I've kind of gone through the first two, is to sleep, would be like sleep mm -hmm. face down. What happens when you sleep face down is you have to turn your neck, mm -hmm. which shortens some muscles on one side and lengthens them on, on another. Uh -huh. A condition called torticollis, or there's a muscle in your neck called your sternocleidomasto, it can get strained. Mm -hmm. um, the, the bad part about that is one, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Second thing is two, it can limit your driving ability. So say you're pulling out and you're trying to look over your, this, over your shoulder and you can't because those muscles are not, huh. not moving properly. I'm learning a lot here. <laughs> um, now the way that I sleep, like I said, is completely twisted. What can that do um, to my spine? Well, again, it can shorten muscles in the, down, down the spine and you're gonna end up straining some muscles, especially like you said, you're always holding tension in your neck. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's not good. It, it can affect your entire body. Um, a lot of babies are told to put, be put on their back. Is there a reason for that? You know, I'm not familiar okay. with that. I'm not really sure exactly okay. why they're told. Um, I, I know that, you know, there's uh, sudden, inf you know, syndrome and things like that, but I'm really not familiar with okay. how you're supposed to sleep a baby now. All right. Um, anything else regarding sleep? Uh, if there's any, any other advice that you would give? Uh, no other advice that I can get. Just try to get plenty of sleep uh -huh. <laughs> and get rested. So a pillow behind your neck or when you're sleeping on your side, one between your arms and then one between your knees. What does that one between your knees do? Um, it, just, it just keeps your pelvis in line. So if you're on the side here, mm -hmm. it just it keeps your, your pelvis from getting locked in. So you're, huh. you're, you're like this instead of having some rotation in that spine and then you have to kind of counterbalance like so. All right. Thank you very much for that information. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about snow shoveling. Winter is a very common time for back injuries, and that's because people are shoveling snow incorrectly. We're going to go through all of the basics coming up a little bit later. Well, I've learned that my sternocleidomastoid is a mess because I do <laughs> sleep on my stomach. And the reason why babies are on their back is for SIDS or sudden infant death mm -hmm. syndrome is a lot of the reason why doctors are saying that now. But Yes, we've been very lucky with these warmer temperatures and it looks like this next week we're not going to see any snow either. But just in case we do, because winter's not over yet, we're going to teach you the proper way to shovel coming up next. Thankfully though, winter has been pretty mild, but that doesn't mean that it'll be like that for the next few weeks or even the next couple of months. Right, Lindsay? Yes, um, last year we saw the biggest snow that we've seen in a long time in February. So winter's not over. Mother Nature's been pretty sneaky on us. Um, hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers that she doesn't decide to play any tricks <laughs> on us uh, this winter. But just in case, we're going to be um, we're going to be on the safe side here. Dr. Justin Felsman joins me now. Um, Explain a little bit about some improper, first of all, improper techniques of shoveling. Okay, absolutely. Um, let me explain the, the most common mechanism of injury, whether it be shoveling snow or anything, mm -hmm. is people bend over, mm -hmm. they don't use their legs, they use their back, mm -hmm. and they, they come up and they twist. Okay. That's the most common, common mistake that people make and then they end up hurting their back. So you've heard the expression, always use your legs when lifting. Mm -hmm. So that's what you should do also with shoveling snow. All right, can we get a little demonstration here? Absolutely. All right. So if you're shoveling snow, um, you always want to keep the lever close to you, whatever okay. you're, you're using. And if you get to the end and you have a large, large um, load of snow, you want to use your legs, bend down with your legs, and then shovel. Uh -huh. Do not, this is the wrong way to do it, is to come down and then twist and then throw over because you're basically, again, you're torquing your spine. Which a lot of people do. Exactly, yep. Uh, yep. And how many injuries do you see with, with the improper use of shoveling? Uh, quite a few, yeah, absolutely. People... Again, you're, you, you may not be in the best of shape, you're not out there exercising all the time, and then you go out there and you're shoveling and it's cold and you're, you have the proper um, fitting clothes, so you start sweating and then you end up mm -hmm. you know, getting lazy, so to speak, instead of using your legs to pick up and you bend down, pick something up, twist, and then you hear that snap, that pop, um, the muscles in the back get inflamed and it's quite common people getting injured. And now, are there other parts of your body that could be injured as well as your back if you do that? Absolutely. If, if you do bend down and you, and you may hear like a snap, you, there could be any number of things. You could have ligaments that get damaged down there. Um, you could also damage a disc. Again, you can kind of have that shooting pain that goes down your leg. 
Um, there's, there's a lot of different things that could happen. All right, I'm going to ask you one more time to demonstrate the proper way to do it, to bend your legs. Um, go ahead. Absolutely. So if, if you always bend, your, bend with your legs down and then straight forward. All right, and keep never, your back straight. Never twist. Okay. Um, any other winter tips for people? Um, just, just take it easy. Be very careful. Um, and, you know, like I said, use proper fitting shoes. Um, have, if you have a friend that can help walk you down, um, use railings. You know, there's just always, always take it easy and, and be on the safe side. And if you have, um, you know, neighbors that are elderly and you know that they maybe have had back issues or something, be a good Samaritan, maybe help them out. Uh, maybe you can make a few bucks here and there also by helping out your neighbors. Or if you would like to do it for free, that would also be very, very nice. I'm sure they would greatly appreciate that. Hannah? Well, I'm still praying for no snow, but if so, lift, <laughs> lift with the legs. I've got it, Lindsay. Thank you.